I have a good comment for your notes. Now's the time to fix the next 10 years. Now, sometimes you have to come to grips with reality and with truth. That's what was good for me when I met Mr. Schoff. I was 25 years old. He was 44 years old. And he brought me a wealth of experience, and he started asking me the tough questions. Big question, he said, are you reading the books that's going to take you where you want to go in the next five years? Excellent question. So you want to make sure. I would assume for all of you, to get where you want to be in the next five years, you're either reading the right books or you're not. That's kind of a brilliant statement, right? You're either engaged in the disciplines or you're not. But here's what we don't want to engage in. Disillusion. Hoping without acting. You know, wishing without doing. So the key is to take a look and say, where am I? What could I do to make the changes, to make sure that I can take more certain daily steps toward the treasure I want, the mental treasure, the personal treasure, the spiritual treasure, the financial treasure. I don't want to make any errors. Now's the time to adjust my daily program to take me where I want to go. You might draw a little circle. This is where you are. 10 years from now, you could be here. Or 10 years from now, you could be here. And the difference in 10 years between here and here could be significant in money and lifestyle, treasures, equity. In 10 years, an incredible difference. But right here, a small difference in the change of discipline, the change of thinking to start you on this journey versus this journey. Now, it's also very important intellectually to know whether or not you're headed this way or this way. And once you decide... Ten years from now, I think that the gathering of my intellectual and personal and spiritual and moral and economic treasure may not be that great. The key is to start right now making these changes to walk this new road. But here's what's exciting to me. Just a few daily disciplines makes a great deal of difference in one year, three years, five years. Just a few daily disciplines, whether you wind up here or here. Good question. Ten years from now, you will surely arrive. The question is, where? We don't want to kid ourselves about where. We don't want to kid ourselves about the road we're walking. I had a day shortly after I met Mr. Schof called, Do Not Kid Myself Anymore Day. I don't want to go disillusioned anymore. You know, I was using the cross-finger theory back when I was 25, 24, 23. I finally decided that the cross-finger theory was not going to get me what I wanted. That isn't where the treasure lies that I'm going to have to make sure which of these ways I'm headed. But a few reading disciplines and a few disciplines of mind and a few disciplines of activity, and you can make all the difference in the world whether you wind up here or whether you wind up here. But just a few changes. Sometimes we get the idea that we're doing about 10% and there's about 90% more that we need in order to make the difference for our fortune. And probably the opposite is true. We're doing enough things to have bought and shared in the good life so far. And maybe all you need is that extra 5%, 10% of intellectual change, activity change, a refinement of discipline, a refinement of thought. And all we need is the ideas to make those simple changes. And the equity starts gathering in one year, three years, five years, 10. So here's one of the key questions of the evening. Starting tomorrow, what are you going to do that'll make a change in your life's direction? Good question. What are you going to do starting tomorrow that'll make a difference? Now, see, if you don't do something starting tomorrow that'll make a difference, guess what? It's going to be the same. <laughs> and see, that way you can guess what the next five years are going to be like. Look at the last five. Because the next five are going to be like the last five unless you, major key, tomorrow, change it all or change a little, or change something, or don't change. It's choice time. You can do whatever you want. But it's nice to know any day you wish you can change your whole life. What can you do starting tomorrow that'll make a difference? Good question. What can you do with economic chaos, massive disappointment? What can you do with a broken heart? What can you do when it won't work? Good question. If you want your life to change, here's the source of it all. Ideas plus inspiration. Now, ideas are not that far away. Everything you need is within reach. 
The ideas you need for life change or business change is within reading reach. It's within listening reach. There's probably a library not too far from you. The problem is, right, there's a library there, but most people drive by. Very few drive in. Do you know how many people own a library card in the United States? 3%. And guess how much they cost? Nothing. Wow. But see, it's within reach. Now, the key is, who's going to reach? There's a simple Bible phrase, and I'm an amateur on the Bible, but here's what it says. If you search, you will find. But it's very important to know that finding is reserved for the searchers. We don't find what we need, we find what we search for. Needing is not the prerequisite to getting value. You can't be a needer, you have to be a searcher. But if you'll search, if you'll try, if you'll go, if you'll listen, ideas are within reach. And ideas are life-changing. There's nothing so powerful as an idea whose time has come. A business idea, a social idea, an investment idea, good health idea. All you need is just the refinement of an idea to make an impact on your life. Gather treasure, gather equity, gather wealth. Because it doesn't take much to make a significant difference as the time passes. A good note for you to take. We could all use a little coaching. Listen to someone's experiences and see if it might cause for you a little moment of correction so that you can make some changes that'll add up to some extra worth in the next one year, three years, five years. All kinds of ideas, health ideas, enterprise ideas, living a better life ideas. Now, if you're excited and you're ready to change, find out how things work. The first key to doing better is find out. To change your life, really, you need ideas. There isn't anything an idea can't change. And Schultz taught me the major problem is lack of an idea, not a problem. At first, I didn't have any money. I said to Mr. Schultz, I don't have any money. He said, that's not a problem. Now, see, up until then, I always thought it was. <laughs> right? I was confused. He said, no, no, the problem is lack of an idea on how to create money and wealth. It isn't lack of money, it's lack of ideas. So if you get the ideas, see, so you can change anything. Now, to get ideas, you need a constant study of finding out. Now, Schof also said, when you find out something that works, put the information in your journal. Don't use your head for a filing cabinet. Put it in your journal so that you can do the next best thing. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Go over it. And if you repeat it, go over it, sure enough, someday, some mysterious day, the idea takes root, starts to grow, and shows up in your bank account, and your dress, and your personality, and your lifestyle. But capture the ideas in your journal. Find out how things work. Schoff gave me this word for my life change. He said, study. Great word. If you wish to be successful, study success. If you wish to be happy, study happiness. If you wish to be wealthy, study wealth. Don't leave it to chance. Make it a study. Some people just go through the day with their fingers crossed. See, that won't do it. You've got to study the things that can change your economic, social, spiritual, personal life. Become a good reader. All of the successful people I know and work with around the world, they're all good readers. Curiosity drives them to read. They got to know. Become a good reader. Now, that's my opinion. Listen to the other lecturers and listen to me and make up your own mind. Don't be a follower. Be a student. Okay? I say, really, for life change, you got to read. One way to learn is from your own experiences. But another way to learn is from other people's experiences. See, one book might save you five years if you read it. Did you know there's books on how to be stronger, more decisive? Be a speaker, be a leader, have a better effect on other people, develop your personality. Did you know there's books on that? And people don't read them? How would you explain that? And they can read did you know that hundreds of successful people 
have written their stories in books and they wrote down how they did it and people don't read it? How would you explain that? The guy's busy, I guess. You know, you get tied up. The guy says, well, yeah, you work where I work, but the time you struggle home, it's late. You got to eat a bite of supper, watch a little TV, get to bed. You can't sit up half the night reading, 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 reading. And the guy's behind on his car payment. Good worker, hard worker, sincere. But you got to be better than sincere and work hard. Otherwise, at the end of your life, you'll wind up cold, stony broke. You got to be better than a good worker. You got to be a good reader. You may not be able to do all you find out, but you should find out all you can do. See, you don't want to wind up at the end of your life and discover that you've lived only one tenth of it. And the other nine tenths went down the drain, not for lack of opportunity, for lack of information. Now, here's the best human virtue for finding out, curiosity. Make a note of that. Curiosity. Be curious. You might add a word to it that'll help. Childish curiosity. What will kids do if they want to know something bad enough? Bug you. That's the phrase. They can ask a thousand questions. You think they're through? They got another thousand. They'll drive you to the brink. It's a virtue. When you got to know, be like a child. In fact, Jesus, the master teacher said, unless you can become like little children, you might as well forget it. You don't have a prayer. Excellent advice. You got to be like children. Four ways, in my opinion, to be like a child. Number one is curiosity. And number two is excitement. Get excited like a child over your ability to make yourself do anything for change. Third is faith. Have faith like a child. Adults are too skeptical. And fourth is trust. Trust is a childish virtue, but the rewards are incredible. So be like a child. Now, there's millions of books, so you can't read all the books. But here's what I mean by read all the books. Read all the books you need to read to make your fortune become powerful, influential, healthy, prosperous, aware, bright, helpful, partnership, father, mother, grandparent. Read all the books you need for your life to flourish and become the best it can possibly be during the course of your lifetime. Read all of those books. Don't be short on that list. One of the greatest experiences any of us can have is the experience of influence. To persuade somebody that we've got a good idea, to persuade somebody to buy a product or consider a service, to be able to influence somebody to a way of life, a product, a, an idea, a company, a corporation, an enterprise. Influence is one of the greatest of life's experiences. The chance to influence somebody else, their thinking, their future, maybe their lives, is a great experience. And all the way from being a manager to an executive to being a parent, we all have in some respects the chance and the opportunity to influence somebody else. Now the key is to develop the skills to do it. There's one thing in doing it casually, another thing in doing it hazardly, and the other is to do it on purpose by learning the skills. Gathering the skills to help influence people to a way of thinking, to a product, to an idea, to an enterprise, or just to a better life. I think, first of all, to get more, we need to just be thankful for what we already have. But let's be thankful for where we are, because that's how good ideas start to flow. Thanksgiving for what you've already got. Here's what blocks the flow of all good information. Cynicism. It's not that difficult to be a practiced cynic. Feeling cynical about circumstances, cynical about place, cynical about opportunities, cynical about people. But if we turn that around, turn cynicism into thanksgiving, now the ideas can flow, information can flow, refinement of ideas can flow. So that's number one, be thankful. Here's number two, be eager to learn. No matter what you know, 
There's always some more. There's nothing like a good, powerful discussion to refine an idea. What we want is ideas that pass the test of the tough questions. And it's good to be around people who can ask the tough questions. Debate has a unique way of refining ideas that can become of value. But here's what I ask you to do. Argue with all this stuff later. Go back over your notes and relive the experience and think about what we've shared with you here. The key is to stimulate the mind, to think thoughts and to think ideas, to open up channels of information. Refinement of intellect is where the future fortune lies. But be eager to learn. And the last comment is, be a good listener, which isn't easy these days. Everybody wants our attention. Radio voices and television voices and advertising voices and political voices and social voices and religious voices and community voices and family voices. And how do you sort through all the voices and give extra time to a voice of substance? It isn't easy. But if you'll practice the art of good listening, no telling what you can find in the way of ideas that can help change your life. The next key word is inspiration. Inspiration is a mystery why some people are inspired and some are not. Who knows what that mystery is? Emotional vitality. Some people have this incredible zest for life and an appetite for living well and doing well. And others seem to take the ho-hum attitude, let it slide. And hopefully it'll work out anyway. I don't know what the difference of that is. But it is exciting to watch people who are inspired. But I think the key to it all is self-motivation. Personal inspiration, drawing emotional vitality from life and the challenge, going for it. We all admire that. Now, just a personal word. I don't know where I've caught you in this particular lecture series. Maybe this is springtime for you. You've got a new opportunity going and no telling what you're going to make of it. And you're all excited. Maybe some of you, we've caught you in harvest time. Maybe you're celebrating. Maybe this is the summertime for you when sometimes the going is tough and the weeds are attacking your garden, and the bugs are after your values. Summertime is an interesting time. It's not that easy to last from spring till fall. Summer is a test, and especially when the creditors are calling. So I don't know, maybe we've caught you in a testing time. Maybe this is challenging time for you, the summertime. Maybe I've caught you in winter, and I'm sure we've all had some of those winter times sort of desperate times, decision-making times. Maybe I've caught you in this series at the fork of the road and some of the decisions you make in the immediate future are going to have everything to do with your next five years, ten years. And I've been to a few of those called forks in the road. I mean, which way do you go? What do you select now as your next path of opportunity? And maybe these are trying times for you. Winter can be a source of trial when the push is on and the press is on. You gotta get going, you gotta take action. The disciplines is the miracle process. And here's how to get the miracle of your future going as far as disciplines are concerned. Number one, do what you can. You might go home and set a whole new pace for yourself and we call it cleaning up neglect. Should walk around the block, could walk around the block for your good health, don't walk around the block. See, you're on the wrong track. Should read, could read, don't read on the wrong track. Should call, could call, don't call on the wrong track. Could change, should change, don't change. You're on the wrong track. Don't let neglect destroy your days, destroy your life, and destroy your future. Go back and do what you can. And if you'll do what you can, then life will give you some extraordinary things to do. You've got to take care of the small disciplines before life will give you a chance to handle the more complicated disciplines.